good day beautiful people and welcome back to my channel my name is ijoma welcome to sew with ijoma in today's tutorial we'll be learning how to sew this beautiful popular and trendy rapper illusion george so i'll be using a george in this video please pay attention because i have some in between details for you please pay attention because it will help you to understand what i'm about to do so let's get to work i'll be using this george i'm using a golden george for this tutorial you will need your george you need your satin and you will need your cutting materials um if you are using a george you will notice that george comes in different forms but mostly you will see this particular one that i'm holding right here in any george comes in like three different forms you have this one the one that has less embroidery you will have the one that has more embroidery and more beading and you will have the net part there is the one, there is this one that comes in a net form so that one is the one that we use for your bustier for your basic bodies for your busty or basic bodies anything that you want to use it for so this one as you can see it has a lesser embroidery and this is the one that we use for the gown part for the down side of the gown that is from the half length down this is the one that we use for it and this one that i cut right here now is the one that i will use for the illusion wrapper this is what do i use for the illusion wrapper because if you can observe you will notice that this one has um a larger point for a, a larger part of embroidery and beading you will notice that the design appears more on this one than the rest so now i will introduce the um the next part this is the next part of the george this is the one that we use for the bustier for the bodies so the design appears to be at the center the reason why it is here is that so that you can cut it out and place on your bustier after sewing so i'll remove those ones then first of all i'll cut the upper part the bustier so this is the next part that i was talking about and i'll go ahead and trace out this design once you get your next part make sure that you trace out the design first or you can keep it and sew your bustier with your doll face and then place the nets on it but i would suggest that you trace it out if you trace it out you just keep it aside after sewing your bustier you can introduce it back because it will help you to arrange it the way you want and it will appear neat as well so i have removed this it will serve as a trimming or as an applique for me so i'll go ahead and keep it aside i will, I will use um a doll face or a matte satin to cut out my bodies because using a doll face to help me to make my markings right and it will also help me to save the net fabric though the net fabric is always up to one and a half yard it can be enough for anything you want to use it and so but i'll advise you to use your doll face first because if you use your doll face to cut it will now give you the space to manipulate or to manage your your, your net fabric so i'll fold it into two because i'll be cutting on fold then i'll go ahead and trim out the rough edge before taking my markings i'll trim out my rough edge first before i start measuring so i've trimmed out my rough edge and i'll place five inches on my off shoulder my off shoulder will start at six inches but i'll make it five then from there i will mark my bust point and a half my under bust 14 and a half my half length is 17 and 19 for allowance 17 plus 2 inches allowance that is 19 then i'll go ahead and rule out these lines 
so i'll finish marking these lines the next thing i'll do is to go ahead and take my nipple to nipple measurement my nipple to nipple is eight divided by two is four plus half inch for seam allowance that is four and a half then from the underboss down i'll measure four four inches and at the chest part i'll measure five inches the reason why I measured 4 inches under the boss is so that it will align, it will look very smooth under the boss. Then I will go ahead and use my ruler to connect these points that I have marked out. I will join them to the other one after the other, then they will be connected. The next thing that I will do is to subtract my two and a half she's bossy but not too bossy so i use two and a half then that two and a half i'll extend it to my under boss and from there i will mark my curve my curve for my breast this is my breast curve right now then at the chest parts you can remove like one and a half inch before you mark your curve or two inches so that it will relax at the upper bust I'll go ahead and cut out the center piece first. So after cutting the center piece, I'll go ahead, I'll leave the neckline for now. Then I'll go ahead and cut out the two and a half inch that I used to curve my breast cup. So I'll cut that one out and I'll go ahead and notch my under bust so that I will know where my wording or my pad will stop. So I will notch it and the next thing is that I will cover the curved parts and make sure that the lines align like the lines are equal to the other, they are straight. Then I will take my body measurements, my waist divided by 4 plus 2 and a half inch. Then my balls divided by 4 plus 2 and a half inch and I will mark it there. Then at the chest parts, I will measure um 14 for now though it is 10 but i'll measure 14 for now so that after joining i will trim out and connect to my armhole then your armhole will stop at two inches above your nip up above your boss point if your boss point is 10 then it will stop at eight then i'll go ahead and cut out what i have there and with this front pieces that i have cut now it's make it easier for me to cut my back pieces you can cut it in any form you want but this is how i'll cut my own i'll place my my center front my center uh, front for my bossy and my side i will not give space for the breast curve because i don't need breast curve for the back then i'll cut out exactly what i have there and i will make a sweetheart shape my dress will have a, a sweetheart neckline and i'll go ahead and cut out my armhole and this will make it easier for me to cut my back pieces then i'll go ahead and open my zipper allowance then at the point where the two part of the front meet at the middle point at the dart side i will notch my darts and that will make it very very easy for me to cut out my back piece now that i am done with my back piece back pieces i will introduce my nets so after cutting on my door face i will cut on my nets because Cutting on my doll face will give me the space to manipulate my net, like I have said. So I'll be placing my pieces that I have on the doll face on the net and I'll be cutting them out one by one. As you can see, this is how I'll cut it. I'll cut my center front. I'll go ahead and cut my side. For the front, my breast curve. I'll cut this one this way. Exactly the way I have it at the on the door face. Then before I cut the back, I would like to explain what you will use this small um 
this small design that you have on the neck this two small design you might wonder what you use it for this one is for the sleeve if you are cutting a fitted sleeve this is what you will use at the edge of the sleeve in order to, you can use it at the edge of the sleeve or at the shoulder part of the sleeve in order to add um in order to spice it up you will fold it this way you fold and fold again then you cut your normal fitted sleeve but for this judge i'm not cutting a fitted sleeve i'll be cutting a cape sleeve so i'll cut it out i'll go ahead and cut out these pieces because i might use it at my back and my back pieces so that it won't look boring and i can place it at the neck i can just place it anywhere that i want because i won't be using this for a fitted sleeve i'm not cutting a fitted sleeve for now then i'll fold my net and cut out the back piece so as you can see i'm cutting my back pieces and and done i'll go ahead and twist this to three minutes i'll cut them out and keep aside and i'll use it i will i will show you how you can place it you can tuck it down or you can use your gum and place it on the back part so this is my back pieces i'll place the net first and i will place the trimmings on you can this is how you can place it if you want then that's all for my cutting i'll cut my lining i will use doll face for my lining i'm using doll face for everything i just want it to look very neat inside the next thing that i will do is to cut my down part so this is the judge that i will be using for my down part and i'll go ahead and fold out my judge I'll fold it the way you fold while cutting your normal skirt. So the down part is a straight cut. It's a straight cut, a pencil straight cut gown. So I'll fold out and I'll make sure that what I folded will be enough for me to cut out my down part. And I'll go ahead and trim out the place that, look like, that looks like a folded part at the top. I'll trim it out and from there I'll start taking my measurement. The person that I'm sewing this judge for has height. The person is very tall. So I'll be using the full length of this judge for it. And from there I'll start taking my from the plain side i'll start taking my body measurement remember that i said that i will use the the george that has less embroidery for my for my inner inner parts for the inner part of the skirt so from the place where i've trimmed out this is the waistline part I will start taking my body measurement. My half length is 17, but I will not place 17 there. I will place 16 and a half because I will be using half inch for joining it to my for, to my uh, body or so, uh, my bustier. Then from there, I will measure from my shoulder to my hip, 28. That is 28 right there. Then from my shoulder to my knee is 40 then from my shoulder to my full length is 65 or 66 she wants it to be floor length she wants it to be a floor length gown so i'll measure 62 or 60 or max 60 and from the 60 point i'll add extra maybe five or maybe five or six inches then i'll use my ruler and draw my straight lines at the points where i have marked my hip line and my knee line so if the person is short you place if the length is 59 you place 59 there and from that 59 you start taking your measurements because if you trim out the edge you will notice that 
the the judge will not look nice so if the person is short place the full length at the edge then from there you can take your hip measurement and your knee line measurement so i'll use my ruler and draw out my lines So I'm done drawing my lines and I'll go ahead and take my waist measurement. The waist is 27 and a half divided by 2 divided by 4 is 6.75 plus plus um 2 inches and you mark it. The hip is 40 divided by 4 is 10 plus 2 inches is 12. You will mark your 12 the knee part at the knee part you mark exactly what you have on your hip if your hip is 40 divided by 4 is 10 just mark that 10 inches on the knee just mark it on the knee so that it will be curvy or you can just do your hip minus 8 and divide it by 4 then i remember i marked 10 at the knee part so at this point i'll be marking nine and a half or nine inches I made it nine inches so that it will have a very pencil, a sharp pencil shape. Then I'll go ahead and join my lines. I use my ruler and join my lines. The next thing that I will do is to go ahead and cut it out. I'm done using, I'm done cutting my front piece. I'll go ahead and fold what I will use for my back piece. So I'll go ahead and fold. So I'll make sure that what I have on the back piece is wider than what I'll have at the front piece so that I can actually use it and cut out my zipper allowance. So I'll cut what I have on my hip side exactly on my back but at the center part that is where my zipper allowance will come in i will use two inches for my zipper allowance and my zipper allowance will stop at my knee part on your knee exactly or like one inch or two inches above your knee line depending on how wide you want how long you want your slit to be my zipper allowance will stop there I'll tell you the reason why my zipper allowance stopped there. I'll use my ruler and connect the lines for my zipper allowance. Then I'll go ahead and cut. I'll cut the waistline and I'll cut my zipper allowance. And I decided to add extra one inch to where I stopped before. So when you reach here, you will go in just like the normal way you cut overlap skirts. 
But the thing now is that the overlap will be it will be a reverse of the overlap because this one will be open straight down at the slit you won't have to fold it in or to hold it with a hemming gum just go down and cut it like half inch the half inch that you are leaving right there is the half inch that you use and turn it with the lining so this is how your slit will look like so that when you are walking and the slit is opening it will look very very neat down there and i'll go ahead and cut out what i have on my hip side they will be they will have exact shape at the hip side and that is all for my front and my back pieces then i'll keep the remaining you can trace out the embroidery and use it to design your dress i'll trace out the embroidery and use it to design my upper parts then we'll go over to cutting the wrapper illusion so for the wrapper illusion you place you open your your skirt this way the down part of your gown this way and you will introduce the george part that has more embroidery as you can see the one inside is plain and the one at the upper part has a larger part of embroidery and beading so you will determine where the edge of your george will stop maybe it will stop very very low and you can take it high but this time i just want it to come down a bit so that they will align so that the difference won't be too much and i will determine how you will remove the george and you place it on your body the reason why you are placed sorry i did not show this part the reason why you are placed it on your body is to determine how long you want your judge to be the one that will fall out that will fall by the side you will determine if you it will be long or if it will just be hanging and whatever you get you will fold the remaining parts you will not have to cut any any part on this illusion judge you will just have to fold the remaining just fold the remaining part of the judge what I mean by that is that, let me see, after you have finished placing your judge, the edge of your judge where you want it to stop, the excess that will come out at the top, you know that excess will come out at the top, the excess that will come out, what you will do is to fold it, fold it, don't like, don't cut anything just fold it and stitch it down or hold it with a pin for now as you can see i folded it so that it will look very very neat at the upper part you will leave it like half inch because you use half inch to join the skirt the down part to the upper part and on the make sure that the parts that will fall out will be on the left side as you can see in the video the part that will fall out is on the left side then you will cut on the right side if you are cutting you make sure that the shape of what you are cutting and the shape of the of the gown of the down part of the gown is the same i can see through this but if you cannot see through it you will turn it upside down just make sure that the shape of the hip and the shape of the waist on the right side are the same. Then if you shift it in, you will see that the other, the left side is longer. This is the side that will fall down, that will fall out like a wrapper after you must have finished stitching it down. You will not have to shape this side. Just shape the other side and raise this wrapper side up. When you raise it up, you will shape it and this wrapper side will just fall on its own i will upload a the sewing video very soon please 
do make sure to subscribe because i'll upload the sewing video or the sewing video you in the sewing video you will see the process that i went through to achieve the gown so this is all for it you can pin it down and test it on your body to make sure that you have gotten what you want so the next thing that i will do is to cut out my lining for the skirt part i'll cut my lining for my back piece and my front piece i'm using a, a satin for my because i want it to look rich and neat if you can get a good lining you can actually use a good lining for your for your george but i'm using a satin for it i'll just go ahead and cut out my lining exactly the same way i cut out my fabric because this is what i'll be using to turn it so that all the parts will be finished and equal as you can see i'm cutting my back part at the slit side i'll cut it exactly the way i cut my fabric so guys please 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 do not forget to subscribe i'm trying to grow please do not forget to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell because anytime I upload a video, you'll be notified. Especially when I have uploaded um, a video for the sewing tutorial. So guys, guys, please do not, do not forget to subscribe. Click the notification bell and like this video. God bless you. I'll be back with my sewing video very soon probably before the end of this week thank you guys very much thank you thank you if you have reached the end of this video god bless you for me i love you guys bye